Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. This video is sort of a, uh, it, it is the last of several parts on global sea level rise, on how global sea level rise is accelerating. Um, in fact, how it's following an exponential trend due to an exponentially declining um, mass on Greenland and Antarctica. So melt rates are doubling uh, roughly at the state at about seven um, with a seven year period of doubling period over the last um, say tw three doubling periods which is about 20 years or so. So um, because this section is quite important I'm going to overlap a few things from the previous video. So I was showing basically Antarctica, this is showing Antarctica and Greenland and how, you know, there's a lot of these prograde beds on Greenland. So as you get calving, the ice goes off because the ice is sitting on bedrock, it's above sea level. So when it, when it breaks off and goes into the ocean, it will cause a sea level rise. And as we lose, get more and more calving at the coastlines, then these glaciers it's like taking a cork out of the bottle and the movement of the glaciers over the land is increased. Also, there's, the glaciers are getting darker because of meltwater ponds on the surface and some of that water is drilling down through the ice to the bedrock, lubricating the bedrock. Large parts of the um, continent are grounded, large parts of the ice are grounded below sea level. So the seawater goes in and un undercuts that glacier from below. Of course, Greenland is got a, in you know is part of the Arctic, and the Arctic Ocean is losing sea ice rapidly and great warming. The ocean water is warming, the air temperature is warming, so melt rates from Greenland will greatly accelerate um, in the near future when we lose sea ice and have a blue ocean event. And also, we have less and less snow cover in the Arctic in the spring, so we're getting a whole warming there. And this particular winter the sea ice is not forming properly, it's stalled out, and we, it is at great risk of completely melting out in uh, the summer of, of 2017. Certainly will happen uh, soon, within the next few years. Um, Antarctica, West Antarctic ice sheet, lots of that is, ice is grounded well below sea level, 5,000 feet, 7,000 feet below sea level even. And so the warm water coming in, it undercuts, it melts out that ice, and the ice is, there's grounding lines where the ice is sitting, and as you lose a grounding line, then large chunks can calve off until you hit the next grounding line. So there's an acceleration of melt of Antarctic ice cap ice, which is um, also, of course, going to have a rapid, uh, you know, a large effect on raising sea level because th this ice is, um, mostly on the bedrock, it's resting on the bedrock. Um, so what we see is also the, because of all the freshening of the water from the ice calving and the sea ice forming and melting, then this water is fresher and therefore it's lighter and it's reducing the amount of Antarctica bottom water that is formed. So we're getting more North American deep water coming in and, and we're getting an, an equivalent of more than 30 Amazon rivers extra flowing in to a particular glacier called the Totem Glacier. So this is a Robert Scribbler article recently on the warm water with flow rates of 30 Amazon rivers, which, which is melting one of the East Antarctic's largest glaciers. So this is the glacier front, the Totten Glacier, and uh, here's where we are. Here's where it is on Antarctica. Okay, so it's on East Antarctica, and it's got embedded in the ice in this particular glacier is about 12 feet or more of sea level rise. So we're talking about, you know, roughly four meters of uh, sea level rise just from this one particular glacier. There's a large canyon running 2000, between 2,000 and 3,600 feet below sea level, six miles wide. It's a weak point, the Achilles heel of this particular glacier. Um, and uh, it's melting from below and uh, it's causing rapid sea level rise. Over recent years, the, uh, it's believed to be in the range of 60 to 80 billion tons 
of ice loss per year um, for this one particular glacier in Antarctica. And this is new information. So the more we study about loss of glaciers from Greenland and Antarctica, the worse the picture becomes. It all leads to a story saying that uh, we're going to get very rapid global sea level rise, much beyond what has been published in any of the papers, um, any of the IPCC reports, etc. On Greenland, it's the, um, oh, well, also on Antarctica, on West Antarctic ice sheet, the, the glacier to watch is the Pine Island Glacier region, or PIG, if you like. And uh, it's connected to, I believe, the, um, is it the Thwaites? Or, no, I might, I'm, I'm, anyway, this particular glacier is, um, it's responsible for about 25% of Antarctica's ice loss up to now. So this is a very, another very fast moving glacier that is, uh, you know, one to definitely watch. Um, and the West Antarctic ice sheet has about five meters of uh, sea level rise um, embedded in it. Of course, the, the, West, the, the East Antarctic ice shelf by far has, has much, the most mass of any of the glaciers. Yeah, it's the Swate Glacier um, is feeding the Pine Island Glacier. Um, and then if we go to Greenland, um, the, uh, one, the glacier there that is moving extremely fast is the um, is, uh, Jacob, Jack, Jacob Chavin Isbray Glacier. It's one of the fastest moving glaciers in the world and it's responsible for causing um, a lot of the sea level rise from, that is derived from, from Greenland. And you can look at satellite images of this glacier you know, with, uh, you know, and you can see noticeable differences within one week to say a couple weeks later in terms of the calving. This is a calving front, there's some icebergs. Um, this is the, uh, the, on the, the, the bulk of the glacier here, and this is also, there's a lot of ice loss from that particular region. So I'd like to sort of put all this together. Um, in, uh, you know, as a conclusion, sort of, to the series of videos on sea level rise. So, first of all, the, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, they talk about dangerous climate change. They're saying that we can't go above two degrees Celsius. That's sort of the danger limit. Um, but see, the, this paper is showing that this target of two degrees does not provide safety. We cannot be certain that multimeter sea level rise will occur if we allow global warming to um, reach two degrees Celsius. We know this warming would remain present for many centuries. Um, and of course, the I different elements of the climate system have different response times. With the temperatures about what they are today, sea level in the last, em in the Eemian, which was the previous, um, interglacial period, warm period, about 120, 130,000 years ago, sea levels were six to nine meters higher than today. We are definitely seeing accelerating mass losses from Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. We've identified amplifying feedbacks that increase the rates of change, that extra water that goes underneath and undercuts them. We're seeing changes in temperature in the North Atlantic, this cold pool, and also in the Southern Oceans that are due to ongoing warming and ice melt. So this is a, the, the human driven climate change is affecting these powerful overturning ocean circulation systems, which have huge effects on the entire planet, the atmosphere and ocean. So in the common meaning of the word danger, two degrees warming is dangerous. Um, global air temperature, it's important to measure this and report on this, but this is a flawed metric of planetary health because faster ice melt, um, let me just grab this, because faster ice melt has a cooling effect for a sustained period. So it's better to um, talk about the earth energy imbalance in, as being uh, a, more, a more fundamental climate diagnostic. Now the, okay, so th th I mean, basically, the, you know, these rapid increases in temperature that we're seeing now will be somewhat reduced when 
They'll be somewhat exchanged, if you like, for very, very rapid melt of ice from Greenland and Antarctica and rapid sea level rise. So we can say, oh, the temperature is not increasing as fast as it was before. Meanwhile, our coastal cities are going underwater. So this is not a, uh, this is not a good thing. Um, we're seeing massive, we're seeing these large amplifying feedbacks in the climate system. It's out of equilibrium. It's changing rapidly. Um, and there is a possibility, a real danger, that we will hand young people and future generations a climate system that is practically out of control. So this paper concludes that to, you know, this is important information for society, policymakers, and the public. We have a global emergency. We have a global climate change emergency. Fossil fuel CO2 emissions need to be reduced as rapidly as possible. Um, and I have been also arguing that this is not sufficient. We need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere and we also need to cool the Arctic or the melt rates from, the, the feedbacks are gonna kick in. We're gonna get methane coming out big time. We're going to get um, a blue ocean event and eventually no snow and ice in the Arctic and Greenland ice sheets are going to uh, collapse extremely rapidly and as they do, they will raise sea level, which will then cause a cascading increase of collapse of ice sheets in Antarctica, which will raise sea level even more. And we're going to be, we'll be going to a world of hurt and difficulty. And the thing is, is if we declare the, a climate emergency now and take these steps, then we have a fighting chance to, to uh, prevent delay, stall, make these things happen on a longer time scale, and um, basically make our um, societies more resilient. So, so thank you for listening. Please have a look at my website, paulbeckwith.net, and uh, please consider supporting um, my, my videos um, with, uh, with, a, with a financial donation so I can keep, them, keep, keep uh, cranking them out. And I think it's becoming more important to do this um, with our present uh, political situation in the U.S. with this, with this uh, Trump craziness. So thank you for listening.